Welcome to Rally 101. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how the turbocharger and ALS or anti-lag system works on the i20N Rally 2 car, what changes you can make, and how that affects performance. So here in front of me on the bench, we have the main components that make up the turbo system on the i20 and Rally 2 car. And this one in particular is the latest version as we use in the European Championship this year with our BRC car. The first thing you'll notice when you open the bonnet will be the heat shielding and the parts that are actually covering up the turbo. And this is required because of the extreme heats that these components get to, to protect the other parts around the engine bay. But of course, once you strip that off, we come to these parts, which is the true baby of what gives the car power, response, and gives us grip and traction out of the corner. And stripped down, the turbo looks very simple, very small. You've got your exhaust wheel, your turbine wheel, and then of course you've got your all-important wastegate, which is helping you control the turbo, which we'll go into in a minute. By the time you have all the plumbing, hoses, cooling systems, and everything attached, it's quite a sophisticated unit. But as a driver, it's something we dearly love. So starting with the, the strip back turbo here to actually explain how the air is pushed through the motor to, to create more power. So starting here on the intake side, here it's leading to the air box and where the fresh air is actually coming into the engine. And this turbine in here is, is sucking as much air into the engine as possible, pushing it through the turbine housing and out here, which then leads to the intercooler to cool the air as much as possible before it goes into the engine. Basically what we're trying to do here is push as much air into the engine as we possibly can. More air equals more fuel, which equals more power. Once the air's gone through the combustion system, we need to get the air out of the engine. So it comes in here through the exhaust side of the turbo, again with another turbine, sucking that air out of the engine and pushing it here out the exhaust. So getting the air in as quick as possible and getting the air out as quick as possible is absolutely key. But how we control that air comes down to this little fella. The wastegate. And this is a mechanical driven system which is managed through the engine ECU and boost and vacuum hoses to open and close the valve here on this exhaust side. So the speed of the exhaust wheel on the turbo side needs to be controlled for a couple reasons, mainly reliability that the turbo doesn't blow the pieces. So as this air is getting sucked out of the engine, the turbine wheel is spinning it up, up to 180,000 revolutions per minute. The wastegate is then able to manage and control that turbo speed by bypassing the air past the turbine wheel and straight out to the exhaust. But the wastegate is also able to help us manage the anti-lag system as well. So here we have the complete unit all together as one. And you can see there's a lot of plumbing as well as uh, additional parts that help make up the complete turbocharger system. And I guess one of the obvious is the turbo restrictor. This is something that we regulated by rules. So on the, within the Rally 2 regulations, we run a, a 32 mil restrictor and this restricts how much air that we can introduce to the engine, which is a parity measure in place to keep the performance level across all manufacturers within the Rally 2 regulations. But in here also we have the plumbing, so we're feeding in oil and water to the turbo, oil to help lubricate the inside of the turbo, and of course water, because like any part of the engine system, it gets very hot, so we're trying to keep this as cool as possible. We have extra vacuum hoses and boost hoses controlling the wastegate, electronic plugs here which is directly feeding to the ECU. As a complete unit we can see the wastegate mounted on the side of the turbo here, controlled to the top. We've got this lever here which is opening and closing the valve on the exhaust side. So this is a critical part to controlling the turbo speed to make sure we have great efficiency and to be working as it should be. So all together this is the baby that helps give us around 300 horsepower on the i20N Rally 2 car. So of course having all the power is great, but how we control that power and how we get the response that we need as a driver is where the anti-lag system comes in. And having that power on demand is all about keeping the turbo spooled up. But how do we keep the turbo spooled up when we're off the throttle, the intake's closed, there's nowhere for the air to go into the engine, so therefore we're not getting the air any air out. The clever engineers do this by introducing more fuel, delay in the ignition timing, and then what we get is the excess uh, fuel and air that comes out through the exhaust valves of the engine, comes in through the exhaust side of the turbo, 
and this creates a ignition combustion within the exhaust manifold that then helps spool up the turbo side of the turbine wheel which is connected through the shaft of the turbo to the intake side which is actually helping keep turbo speed so that when we do come back on the throttle and the intake finally opens again the turbo is already up to speed there's pressure there's air there ready to go to directly go into the engine when and how the driver wants it. One setting doesn't match every scenario and it comes down to not only the driver's preference but also the conditions that you're driving in. And of course in the Hyundai i20N we have settings on the steering wheel. We have four different ALS settings which range from lazier to more responsive but this can also vary from rally to rally. So how you set this up is very dependent on what you want from the car and working with your engineer to find the best solution. For me, on high grip surfaces such as tarmac, I want instant power, as much torque as I can, as quickly as I can, especially as the car is quite rigid, it's not going to unsettle the balance of the chassis too much. But on the other side of that, when we get to gravel or low grip surfaces, I need the power to be a more smooth delivery so that I'm not upsetting the balance of the car and can keep me confident as a driver. So how this is done obviously is through the ECU, which is done through turbo speed maps, uh, but also uh, throttle maps as well on terms of how that response and the throttle map working in correlation with the turbo boost pressure map which the engineers all do through ultimately the ALS system. And of course being able to manage this on the steering wheel of the car means that you can not only change it between stages, you can even be changing it during stages as the conditions may or may not be changing. So that was my guide to how the turbocharger and anti-lag system works on the i20 and Rally 2 car, covering everything from what you can change and how it affects performance. For more videos like this, check out our Rally 101 series, and remember, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe.